Welcome back to Pentagram Prime, everyone. Stick around for a channel update at the end of today's lesson. We will be going over exercise number 19 on page 236 of Marsden and Hoffman, where we are asked to determine the residues of four different functions at the specified locations in the complex plane. I think I've referenced residues in a previous lesson, but just to be safe, let's briefly discuss what a residue is. For a given function in the complex plane, the residue corresponds to a closed loop about a given point. I believe it's supposed to be integrated over a counterclockwise direction. However, while I did see a counterclockwise curve in a diagram, I didn't see the curve specified that way in the text. Use your best judgment. I'm just a YouTuber with a math fetish. So for our n series, the residue equals the b sub 1 coefficient, which can be determined either by integration over the aforementioned path or by calculating the Lorentz series and inspecting the coefficients for the 1 over z minus z naught term. In all four cases in this episode, we will be obtaining the residue in question via the latter option by first calculating the Lorentz series. Part A. For f of z equal to 1 over z squared minus 1, we are looking for the residue at z equal to 1. As stated earlier, we will determine the residue by calculating the Lorentz series for f of z, which will give us our answer in the b sub 1 term. In order for the b sub 1 term to yield the residue of f of z at z equals 1, the Lorentz series needs to be centered at z equals 1. Thus, we seek a Lorentz series of the form shown here, with all terms being powers of z minus 1. We begin by breaking down the second order polynomial located in the denominator into z minus 1 and z plus 1 terms before applying fractional decomposition to get half times 1 over z minus 1 minus half 1 over z plus 1. The negative half z plus 1 term needs to be converted into something compatible with the Lorentz series that we desire. So we now use addition and subtraction to create a z minus 1 term in the denominator. If we factor out a 2, we now have z minus 1 over 2 on the right. From here, we can factor out a minus sign from the z minus 1 over 2 term, and we now have minus 1 over 4 times a geometric series that is based upon negative z minus 1 over 2. I could probably stop here, but I do like to encourage good housekeeping practices when it comes to algebra. So let us incorporate that minus 1 over 4 term into the summation. Negative z minus 1 over 2 raised to the n breaks down into z minus 1 to the n and negative 2 to the negative n. At the same time, minus 1 over 4 becomes 2 to the negative 2, quantity multiplied times negative 1, and we can lump the powers of 2 together inside of the summation while the minus sign momentarily stays outside. Negative 2, quantity raised to the negative n, is now split into negative 1, quantity raised to the negative n, times 2 raised to the negative n. Factoring in the negative 1 that had previously been left outside of the summation, we now have negative 1 quantity raised to the negative n plus 1 times 2 to the negative n plus 2 times z minus 1 to the n. We now have a Lorentz series centered about z minus 1. There was no mention of finding a domain for the Lorentz series in this problem, but it is good to be mindful of such things. If you check, you will find that there exists a finite radius of convergence for the geometric series about the point z equals 1 in the complex plane. With that said, the Lorentz series is solid, and the residue for f of z equals 1 over z squared minus 1 at z equals 1 is 1 half because that is the coefficient of the 1 over z minus 1 term. Part b. For f of z equal to z over z squared minus 1, we are looking for the residue at z equal to 1 in the complex plane, and we will be doing this by calculating the Lorentz series for f of z centered about z equals 1. As with part a, we will begin by breaking down the polynomial in the denominator before utilizing fractional decomposition in order to determine the coefficients of the 1 over z minus 1 and 1 over z plus 1 terms. A little bit of algebra, and voila, we have half 1 over z minus 1 plus half over z plus 1. 
Next, we need to express the second component in terms of c minus 1, and the process is identical, save for a factor of negative 1, to that of part a. Our Lorentz series now complete. We observe that the coefficient of the 1 over z minus 1 term is 1 half, and thus we have the residue for z over z squared minus 1 at z equals 1. Part c. Here we seek the residue of e to the z minus 1 divided by z squared at z equals 0 in the complex plane. Thus, Lorentz series centered at z equals 0 is called for. We will begin by factoring out the z squared term in the denominator and converting e to the z into its corresponding Taylor series. Next, we distribute 1 over z squared across the bracketed terms and then expand the aforementioned Taylor series into its individual terms. Distributing 1 over z squared across the terms in the Taylor series, we see that minus 1 over z squared cancels with positive 1 over z squared, and what is left is a Lorentz series centered at z equals 0. We observe that the 1 over z term has a coefficient of 1, and thus we have the residue for e to the z minus 1 over z squared at z equals 0. Part D. Finally, we want to obtain the residue of e to the z minus 1 over z at z equals 0 in the complex plane. As with part c, we will be seeking a Lorentz series centered at z equals 0. We will begin by distributing 1 over z across the numerator, which gives us minus 1 over z plus 1 over z times e to the z. And yes, I reverse those two terms for reasons that will become clear shortly. Expanding e to the z as a Taylor series, like we did for part c, we can now distribute 1 over z across the individual terms. The result allows us to cancel the minus 1 over z term at the beginning with a positive 1 over z term from the Taylor series. At this point, we have our end series. However, it doesn't have any components in its principal part. However, we can add 0 times 1 over z to the expression. Thus, the residue for e to the z minus 1 over z at z equals 0 is 0. To be clear, we still have a singularity at z equals 0, but with all of the coefficients for the principal part being 0, we refer to it as a removable singularity. It's Wednesday, January 12th, 2022, and I'm posting this video just for the sake of getting something out. What you just saw is hardly an example of my best work, but it beats having a dead channel. Shout out to whoever is still upping my subscriber count in spite of a non-existent upload schedule. Uh, as of today, I'm at 147 subs, so thanks again. I'm coming off a three or four month period where I did not have a personal computer of my own. So I've got a lot of catching up to do. Uh, if I hadn't already spent about a week learning how to use some new software packages, then I probably would have taken the time to re-record the audio that you just heard. If you need me to clarify anything, then you can reach me in the comments. Future episodes may have a reduced inclusion of audio. It can be difficult to sync up to the lesson in real time. One possibility will be to include audio at the end of an animation sequence. I've also considered just using background uh, music. Either way, uh, the new computer, along with a recently acquired webcam that I'm hoping to test out soon, should give me some options, including stop motion photography, which I've always wanted to try. Um, in my last episode, I talked about how frightening it was when I realized that I nearly published an episode with a mathematical error in it. So I've had some time to consider whether or not to produce the sort of content that I've become accustomed to. What I've come up with is this. I'm not perfect and I know it, and at some point I will no doubt slip up. I mean, just look at today's graph, which was put together in a real hurry. I figure as long as I'm honest about that and willing to issue some corrections, then Pentagram Prime should ultimately be able to ethically justify its existence. So I'm back to making content and looking forward to new adventures, both in 2022 as well as in the complex plane. I'm also interested in doing some gaming streams. However, if and when that happens, it's probably going to be on a separate channel. Till next time, this is Pentagram Prime signing off.